Hello everyone and welcome to the Code Along today. This is a Code Along especially for primary schools. So I can see we have a lot of people joined in already. So we'll give it just a few minutes just for everyone to gather and kind of get set up. My name's Alan Joyce from Coding Ireland. So you'll see me in the chat here as Code Ninja. That's my username. Um, so far we have 80 students logged in and then another 137 watching that aren't logged in. Though. So if you're not logged in, that's fine. You can do the code along as well. Um, you just won't be able to get the learning points and the badges. Um, and you'll see what I mean by those once we, once we uh, get going on the code along. All the students that are logged in, um, once you click on done on any of the steps, you will, you will get uh, your points and your badges. Um, so let me just call out a few of the of the coders that we have. We've got, as I said, we've over 84, we've 84 logged in. So I won't, I won't get to everyone, but just some of the people I see are Senin, Sophie, Jane, Nathan, Hannah, Anna, Kathleen, Orla, JZ Gaming. Um, who else have we got? Deku, Lauren, Mats, Layla, Ketchup, Matty, MM, I missed that one, MM, or M, Mac G11, Biscuit, Na, Void Moon, Podge G. So we've lots and lots of different coders. So you're all very welcome. I'll try and call out people as we get through the day. So let me go back up to the top here. Okay, so let me just explain, first of all, how a code along works. So I'd say for a lot of you, this might be the first time you're doing a code along, maybe with ourselves coding Ireland. So I'll explain how it works. So let me switch to presenting. So at the moment, you should be seeing me in this little box up here, this little YouTube box, and that's where I'm broadcasting from. Down here on underneath the video is our kind of feed of our code along. So as people join in and as they complete steps, you'll, you'll see the feed update. Uh, we might ask some questions and give away some uh, prizes as well. So it we'll use the feed for that. Um, and then here on the main kind of area of the page, oh here, let me throw on, put on a little halo on my mouse. Is that working? There we go. So let me close that. So over here, we've got the steps of the project that we're going to be doing today. So today we're going to be making a maze game in Scratch. And I'll explain a little bit about, uh, about that in a couple of minutes. So what we're going to be doing is working down through these steps. And the way a code along works is I'm going to demonstrate how to do a step. So when I do, I'm going to ask everyone to go into full screen. So you should be able to click on the little uh, kind of box icon here, box button, and that will put you into full screen. And you should get a nice, clear picture of, of my screen and what I'm doing. Um, so I'll demonstrate the step. Let me put my head back on the screen. No, it's not coming up. That's okay. So I'll demonstrate the step. And then you can, uh, then I'll tell you to come out of full screen. And then you can go and do the step yourself and then uh, go back into full screen. And that's basically how it works. Um, okay, so let me jump back here. So how many coders do we have? We have 154 watching and 126 logged in. So that's brilliant. So we've, oh, we've nearly 300 uh, people joined in. So that's brilliant. Okay, so I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll uh, get going and I'll, I'll kind of explain as we go along how this, uh, how this works. So let me jump in to present. So what we're going to be making today is a maze game. Um, so it's going to be a maze game in Scratch. Um, and this is, uh, we're going to be creating code. So what code is? Coding is just our programming. It's just writing step-by-step -step instructions that a computer follows. And that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be uh, making a game in a, in a, on a website called Scratch which lets us create code. Some of you might have used it before, some of you won't. Um, but I'll give you a little, uh, little whistle-stop tour of Scratch and, and explain what it is. This is a simple enough uh, project today. Um, there's only seven steps, I think, in it. And then we're gonna be doing more code logs each Wednesday for primary schools. And we'll progress along as we move along each Wednesday. We'll just do things a little bit more and more advanced as we go along. Um, 
I can see that in the feed here that some people are working away and starting to, to work through the project. That's absolutely no problem. If you want to work ahead, you can work ahead. If you want to come along with me, come along with me. Okay, so I'm going to start uh, the very first step, which is I'm going to open up the Scratch project. So if you're coming along with me, just don't start the step yet. Watch what I, de watch what I do and demonstrate. And then when I tell you, you can go ahead and do the step. So we've created a project in Scratch that already has a maze added to it. So I'm going to click this link here in step number one. It's going to open up a second tab. So when we're working through code alongs, you should have two tabs. You should have one tab for the lesson and then the other tab for where you're actually creating the code. And we'll switch back and forth between the two of them uh, as we work our way through. So let me zoom in on the code here a little bit. So this is the Scratch project editor. I, again, some people might be new to Scratch, so I'll give you a little bit of a tour around the screen. On the left-hand side here, here, let me zoom in. On the left-hand side here is the toolbox. Why is that not zooming in for me? Try that again. Nope, still not zooming in. That's oh, okay. On the left-hand side here is the toolbox, and this is where there's all the different code blocks. Um, which are basically just instructions. We've got ones for motion or movement, ones for looks, for sound, events to start things, uh, control, sensing, operators, variables, and my blocks. We won't be using all of the different categories of blocks today, but we will be using some of them. Um, so basically the way it works is when you want to use a code block, you just drag and drop it into the code area. Um, and that will uh, give the instructions to whatever uh, character or sprite uh, that you're, you're programming at, at the moment. So at the moment, we're, uh, I'd be programming this maze sprite, but we're gonna add in a beetle character or a beetle sprite as they're called, a sprite as they're called in Scratch. Um, so you just drag and drop them in. If you need to go into a different toolbox, you can just click on the different categories and it'll show you the blocks for those. But I'll be demonstrating each, each time we need to add in some code, I'll be demonstrating. And then when we need to, when we want to run our code, we'll just click on the green flag up here and that will run our code and we'll see it all play out in this area here, which is called the stage area. Let's see if my zoom is working. Nope, still not working, not to worry. Okay, so that is step number one, is just to open up the Scratch project. So once you've done that, you come back and you click on the done button here and it'll tell you what uh, award you get. So I'm after getting a telescope from the space series that it's a rare we've got original rare and legendary awards different categories so if you all want to go ahead and do that now step number one is just to open up the scratch project so you just click on that link in step number one and that's going to open up the scratch uh, oh, should open up a new tab on your computer and um, you should see the scratch editor uh, load up into it. Once you've done that, you can come back onto this instructions tab and click on the done button. So what I'm going to do here in my feed, I can see when a uh, coders complete a step. Um, and I can see how many complete it. So that gives me an idea because we're, we're dealing with, uh, well, I've 136 that I'll be able to see. So I'll be able to get a, a sense for how many have completed that step and then I'll be know when to move on to the next step. As I said, in this project, there's only one, two, three, four, five, five steps. And then at the end, this sixth step is just talking about how we might improve the game. Um, while we're waiting for my stats to update, um, I'll just quickly explain or give you, uh, talk about some of the prizes we, uh, we're going to give out today. So we're going to give out two prizes today. Um, let me switch to my side cam. This will work. The first prize uh, we're going to give out is the is a microbit. So what these are, let me just plug this in. These are little micro computers that we can program and they're really cool. Um, they've got LEDs on them, they've got buttons that you can program, and um, they've got a speaker, which you probably should hear a bit of music at the moment if I put it up to the mic. Um, and then they've got lots of different sensors in them. Um, you can program them to, you know, uh, to scroll across different text and put up uh, icons and different things like that. 
there's different sensors in them. There's a compass, a thermometer, um, an accelerometer, so it can de detect when it's sh uh, shaking or if you turn it upside down or flip it. Um, it's got a microphone, a speaker, um, as I mentioned. It's really, really cool. Um, so we're going to be giving one of those away to what we'll do is we'll choose one of the coders uh, that is logged in today and we'll give that away. And then another thing that we'll be giving away um, is one of these. It's just a VR uh, cardboard headset. Basically, what you can do is you can just take a phone uh, and there's different VR apps that you can get and you put it inside and it, it actually reacts as you move around and look using this. It's really cool because you can do different experiences like you can be up in space, you can be underneath water and, and there's lots of different games as well. So we're going to give away one of those as well uh, today. Okay, let me jump back to presenting. Let's see, okay, my stats haven't updated, so I'm just gonna refresh my page and see if that will kick it in. Um, because once I kind of need my stats, just to kind of see how many coders have completed a step. So just give it a few seconds and it should pop up. Any second now. Could be something wrong with my code. This isn't working. Hmm. I wonder if it's because we have so many coders joining us today. If, 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 if it does go down, that's not a problem. We can go ahead anyway. Okay, so let's assume that most of the coders have completed the Open the Scratch project. So now we're going to move on to the second step, which is adding the Beetle Sprite to the project. So in Scratch, we have a sprite library. So it's, uh, as I said, characters in, in Scratch are called sprites. So there's a sprite library and there's lots and lots of different uh, characters and animals and things that you can add in. What we're going to add in is this beetle sprite here. Uh, and once you add it in, it should go into the stage area here. You'll see it like that. So to do this, so if you want to go into full screen, I'll show you how. So I'm going to switch across to Scratch. Can I remove my head um, no it's not working okay so down here then the bottom left um you can there's two two buttons uh sorry i'm trying to remove my head so up oh, there we go that's better so there's two buttons down here can i zoom in on that yep yeah, there we go okay so you can add a sprite or you can add in backgrounds what we're going to do is choose a sprite from the sprite library. So you just need to click on this little magnifying glass and it'll open up the sprite library. And there's lots of different sprites. You can search for them, you can filter them and show just the different categories. So if you want to just do music or sports and so on, I can uh, do that. But what we want is the beetle sprite. So it's alphabetical. So A, B here is the beetle sprite. So if you just click on that once, it'll add it into the sprite list here and then it'll add the beetle sprite to the stage area here. So if you want to go ahead and do that step, step number two, so that's switch across to your scratch tab and uh, open up the sprite library, move my head again, and find the beetle sprite here and then click on it once and then what that will add it to your um, add it to your, your project and show it in the stage area here. I'm going to see if I can get the stats working again in the meantime. So once you have added the Beetle Sprite, come back to the instructions page and just click on the done button. So there'll be a done button on step number two. I clicked mine already. Uh, and that'll mark the step as done for you. Still trying to get my stats updating. The feed seems to have gone down. I'll need to check why that's happened, but not to worry. Okay, so I'll just give a few more uh, just another minute or so for people to complete that step, adding in the Beetle Sprite. Um, just if you are doing any of our other projects, we also provide audio uh, for each of the steps. So if you click on play, it should play out um, the, the audio instructions. So if you 
uh, just for any of the any students that you know have uh, aren't you know quite up to speed with reading yet we do have audio instructions as well which just kind of help and then also when you see a blue box like this one here in the on a step it just means it just is a tip and shows you some extra information so this one here is showing you how you can add in a sprite from the sprite library so it just shows you a little animation of how you can do it and um, so you'll see those in different steps you'll see little blue boxes okay i wonder in the background can i check how many coders have completed that step okay looks like a good few have completed that step so we might move on to step number three so in step number three let me zoom in here we're actually going to add in some code for the first time so we're going to give some code to the beetle sprite that we just added and what we're going to do is we're going to shrink the size of it because at the moment if i open up this one here it's far too large to fit through the corridors of the maze so we're going to need to give some code, some instructions to it to shrink. So we're going to set its size to 15%. So that will shrink it right down. And then we're going to uh, we're going to give it some code, some instruction to place it at a specific location on our uh, on the stage area, right at the beginning or right at the entrance here of our maze. So I'm going to explain how how the X and y values these are coordinates it's basically like an address or an air code and it it it, it, descri it gives the uh, instructions for whereabouts on the stage area um, uh, a sprite should appear or where you want to place it so let me switch across to uh, scratch okay so i'm going to be adding in some code to the beetle sprite and um, so it's important that the, let me zoom in on the stage. It's important that the beetle sprite is selected. It's got the blue box around it because that means any code I add in will be for the beetle sprite. Um, okay, so let me go into the toolbox. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the events toolbox first of all, and we're gonna drag in. So that's holding down the left mouse button and dragging in and dropping into the, into the kind of uh, main area, which is the code area. So we're going to drag in when green flag clicked. Then we're going to go into the looks toolbox and I'm going to scroll down and get the set size to 100% block. And I'm going to drag that in. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to join it on. You'll see as I put it close to the uh, green flag clicked, it gets a little shadow and that means I can drop it and it'll connect. Now we want to change that from 100% to 15%. So I'm just going to click on here and I can get rid of the 100 and type in 15%. So if I click on the green flag up here, you'll see that it shrinks it down. It runs the code and shrinks it down. And then I need to just add in one more uh, block in this step. And that is, I'm going to go to the motion toolbox and I'm going to drag in go to x y now these will have different numbers in here they might have different numbers for you that's okay we're going to set what they are so i'm going to drag it in and again put it at the bottom so put it underneath and connect it to set size two okay i'm just going to quickly um you don't have to do this step that i do here but i'm going to just quickly show you and explain the x and y grid so just bear with me one second as i do this um Hide that. Okay, let me zoom in on the stage area and get rid of my head. Okay, so what I'm just doing here is I'm showing you the X and Y uh, grid, the coordinates and how they work. So basically the X axis uh, determines where something is left and right. Okay, so right in the middle of the stage area is X zero. Okay, so if I'm to drag if I drag the beetle there, that's the beetle is at X zero. As the beetle moves to the right hand side, the X number goes up. So X one, X two, X three, X 50, X 100, X 200, X 300 and so on. So as he moves out this way, his X position uh, moves. So you'll see it actually here. So that's X uh, 177. If I move him back here, it'll be X 100. Uh, and 
go back to the center so he's at x1 or nearly at x0 as he moves to the left he goes down so into the minus figure so x minus 1 minus 2 minus 5 minus 20 x minus 100 x minus 200 and so on and that, so the x number determines where something is left and right the y number is for up and down the y-axis is for up and down so again in the middle is y0 so you see y0 here if I put it I can even change it this way I'll push the, the beetle to y50 so it moves up to 50 I'll push it to 100 moves up to 100 if I want to move it down from the center it needs to go into the minus y numbers so let's do minus 50 go there let's do minus 150 he, he should go about here there you go so that's basically what the x and the y numbers are so hang on let me go and push my things back as they were okay so that explains the x and the y uh, uh, coordinates so let me choose my beetle so what we want to put in here and you'll see it in the in the instructions is we want to put in x minus 175 and y minus 55 so I'm going to do that now so x minus 155 and y minus 75 and when I click on the green flag you'll see that the beetle goes to the start of the maze so at the start of the game we'll click on the green flag and that will position our beetle in the place that we want it to be ready to go okay so if you want to go ahead and do that step that is step number three uh, to shrink the beetle so that's adding in the code uh, adding in some code for the first time so again make sure your beetle is selected in the in, in scratch so in the in the sprite list here you just need to click on the beetle to make sure it has the blue border blue box around it don't click on the little trash icon because that will delete your sprite if you do do that by accident just go back in uh, to the sprite library and add it back in and once you've uh, so once you've selected the beetle you're going to go into the events toolbox and drag in a when green flag clicked and then go into the looks toolbox and get set size to 100% and put that underneath the when green flag clicked and you'll change the 100 number inside that block to be 15 so set size to 15% and then finally you'll go into the motion toolbox and get a go to xy block and there'll be numbers beside x and y you drag that in and put it at the bottom of the group of code code blocks underneath the set size 2 and you're going to change the x number to minus 155 and the y number to minus 75. Oh, it's, okay do I have the stats back up and working I hope we can get them back up and working because they um because I was planning on asking a couple of questions and putting up a little uh, a couple of kind of quizzes in there and get people to answer them but it doesn't seem it doesn't seem to be updating for me so I guess this is a problem just on the sheer amount of people that are joining in today so all, all we need to do is just um, change a couple of settings so we can cater for more people the last I looked there was 300 people joined in so which is brilliant but unfortunately it's crashed our feed not to worry anyway okay so that is step number three I'll just give a couple more minutes for people to do that step because that's the first time we're adding in some code and I'll tell you what we'll do in the meantime we'll just do a draw for um, the for the HR headset so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a list of the coders that have joined us today. And we're going to pick out a random coder from this list. 
Okay. So if I bring this list in. Okay, so we can see we have a. Oh, I put that in the wrong place. Let me go up to the top. There we go. So we've got all our coder coders that have joined us today. And um, so we have 145 coders that have logged in. And you'll see that there's a number beside each one of these. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose a random uh, random person out of the, uh, this list and we're going to give them the HR headset. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to open up another Scratch project and quickly add in some code to choose a random person. So what I'm going to do is when green flag clicked, I'm going to wait one second and then I'm going to get the cat sprite to say I'm going to get him to say the winner is number oh, maybe if I spell that correctly be better and we're going to choose a random number so I need to flick back here. How many coders did I say? 145. So we have to choose a random number between 1 and 145. So pick random 1, 2, 1, 4, 5. Okay, so this is the draw for the HR headset. So I'm going to click here. And the winner is number 88. Okay, so let's go back and see who number 88 is. 88 is Matt's. So I'm going to color you in. So what we'll do, uh, Matt's, uh, whoever that coder is, we will uh, email your teacher and we'll get, we'll send out the HR headset to your school and then your teacher can give you that. So well done, Matt's. Okay, so let's move on now to step number four, which is programming the arrow keys to move the beetle. Um, so what we're going to do, let me go to my side cam again. So I can show you my keyboard. So on your keyboard, um, you have arrow buttons, these buttons here, up, down, left and right. And what we're going to actually do is program these. So when you press these, they're going to send instructions to the Beatles sprite to move it up, down, left and right. So that's the code we're going to add in now. Go back to present. So to do that, I'll give, well, actually, first of all, I'll show you what it looks like. So when you do program this, you'll be able to move your beetle up, down, left, and right. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in uh, from the events toolbox, a block that we can say when up arrow key pressed, we're gonna point the sprite in a certain direction. So at the moment it's pointing this way, and we'll point it up, and then we're gonna get it to move 10 steps. Um, and that's gonna be for the up arrow. And what we're going to actually do is we're going to do that for the up arrow, the down arrow, and the down arrow will point it in the direction 180. So that's, it's basically by degrees. So up, so there's 360 degrees in a full revolution. So up is zero degrees, uh, down is 180. And it actually, so when you go to the, go to the left, it goes into the minus figures. So to make it move left, it's minus 90. So you see the point in direction 90 for the left arrow, minus 90. And then for the right arrow, it's pointing direction 90. But I'll show you this, I'll demonstrate it on the screen. Okay. So I'm gonna switch across to Scratch. I'm gonna make sure the Beetle Sprite is selected because I'm adding code to the Beetle Sprite um, and zoom in. So I'm gonna go into the Events Toolbox and I'm going to get a When Space Key Pressed block. Let me move this down here so a bit of space so when space key pressed but you'll see there's a little white arrow beside space that means I can click it and it gives me options for what I can change this block to so it has all the different keys in here and what we want to choose is up arrow so when up arrow key pressed then I'm going to go into the motion toolbox and get point in direction 90 so this one here and I'm going to join that underneath and when I click on the 90, I actually get, let me zoom in, I actually get a little arrow that I can drag around and say what, what direction I want to point uh, the sprite in. I want to point it uh, up, so that's pointing direction zero degrees. 
and then finally I want to uh, move 10 steps so into the motion toolbox get a move 10 steps and put that in underneath point and direction so that means let me just click on green flag when I press on my up arrow on my keyboard it moves the sprite up okay and there's an easy way so if I flick back to my code to the instructions and zoom in so you'll see that we need we need to do this for the up arrow the down arrow the left arrow and the right arrow and the code is basically the same apart from what arrow we're, we're programming so up down left and so on and then the only other difference is what direction it gets pointed in the move 10 steps is the same for each one so we could drag and drop this code in from scratch again and just create it all again or what you can do is you can actually duplicate a block of code, a group of code. And to do that, all you need to do is right click somewhere at the top of the group of code and it'll give you a little menu and you can say duplicate. And what that does is it creates an exact carbon copy, exact copy of the code. And then you can choose to put that somewhere else. So let me arrange these. So if I do that once, then I can up do it for the down arrow. So program down arrow to be down um, I'm going to duplicate again and I'll do the right arrow and again change the point in direction so it's pointing to the right and then finally one more duplicate we'll do the left arrow oh, view down and we'll change the arrow to be left so that means now if I zoom in when I go up down left and right you'll see my beetle moves uh, so i can actually control my beetle at the moment you'll be able to go through the walls in the maze so that's a bit of a problem we need to fix but we'll fix that in the next step so if you want to go ahead and do step number four um, which is to add in the codes to program the up down left and right arrows and again, in the meantime, I'm going to see if I can get my stats back working. This is going to be a common theme to see if I can get them working. I'm going to refresh, close my video and start the stats. And hopefully it'll work. It's the thing about co code. Code is like maths in that it's, it's kind of very precise. So say you're doing a sum in maths and you know you get one part of the sum wrong it's going to change the outcome change the answer quite you know uh, from what it should be and coding is the same so if you make a mistake in coding it can change the result um you know from what it should be and it can uh, do different things we all make mistakes we make make mistakes in maths and you'll make mistakes in code i make mistakes when i'm coding as well and that's why we test our code so when we add in some code and um, say in scratch we go and we click on the green flag and we observe we watch to see does it do what we wanted it to do the instructions that we wanted to give it does it work correctly and sometimes it doesn't and you need to kind of figure out what went wrong so you need to go back to your code and kind of uh, look through it and see if you've added it correctly and most times you'll kind of figure out oh wait I, I put this in the wrong place or I put the wrong number in here um, and you fix it and then you go and you test it again and then it works so that's just called testing your code and it's something that you should do uh, as you're making your your code projects just every now and again test if it works um, and if it doesn't go back and fix it you can just add in the code all the way through say you're doing a project and just cross your fingers and hope it works and then at the end press the green flag but most times it won't so that's why we do our testing as well okay fortunately my stats are still not working so I can't do the I was going to do some quizzes um, so I was going to put up a, a couple of images and get everyone to guess the answer for them and type it into the chat. We'll get that fixed for the next code along. Okay, so I'll give a bit more time. What time are we at? 11.34. Okay, so I'll give a couple more minutes just to finish step number four. And that's where we're adding in the code to program the arrow keys. 
and then we're going to move on to step number five in a minute and in step number five what we're going to do is we're going to detect if the beetle touches off the wall or any wall in the in the maze so we're going to detect that Okay, so again, I'll just give a little bit more time, maybe give one more minute for people to finish step number four. When we're doing our code alongs, the way it normally works is that some people might just wanna go ahead and do the steps themselves and work through the project themselves. They're happy enough, you know, look, reading the instructions and working away at their own pace, and that's absolutely fine. Um, and then some people prefer to come along with the teacher and watch the teacher do the step and then when the teachers finish the step, then they do the step themselves and then they come back and the teacher shows them the next step. And then some people, sometimes I go too fast um, for some people um, and they struggle to, to keep up. If that happens, don't worry, it's okay. We always leave our, our code alongs and all the steps and instructions up on our website. So even if I'm maybe going too fast sometimes um, and you're struggling, the steps stay up there, the instructions stay up there, so you can finish it in your own time. Um, you can even finish it at home. Um, all our all our code alongs and the projects and their instructions are all up on our website. So you're able to just go into them and open them up and start working away at your own pace. So just to mention that. Okay, so we'll move on to step number five. And in step number five, what we're gonna do is we wanna stop the beetle moving through being able to go through the walls so as you can see here in the little animation this is what we want to do when it when it bumps off a wall we just want to make it move back so it's moving forward 10 steps each time and if it bumps off a wall what we're going to do is make it move minus 10 so it just makes it take you know 10 steps back in the other direction so what we're going to do is we're actually going to add some code underneath the go to xy um, code so what we're going to do it's this is quite fast i'll do it a little bit slower we're going to add in a forever block and what a forever block does it it whatever's inside it it keeps on repeating it forever so forever we're going to check if the beetle is touching the maze then we will move minus 10 steps so we'll forever keep on checking if the beetle is touching the maze we're going to De detect that and make it move back minus 10 steps so you can see the code here forever if touching maze then move minus 10 steps so what an if then block is is it, it tests a condition to see if it's true or false so in this in this case we're we're testing if the beetle because we're adding this to the beetle sprite if the beetle is touching the maze so that's the condition there that in that kind of light blue the condition is it, uh, is it touching the maze true or false if it is touching it'll be true then the code will get into here and it'll move minus 10. if it's not touching false then the code will skip by here and then just keep on go going along so it won't run this move 10 steps uh, instruction block okay so I'm going to, if you want to go into full screen, I will show you how to do this. So I'm going to go back into scratch. I'm going to go down to this block here. So you can drag and move around your code area. So what I want to do is add in the new code underneath this go to X minus 155 Y minus 75 block. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the control toolbox, control, it's the orange one and I'm going to get the forever block and you'll notice that it's shaped differently that's because we can put blocks inside it so what I'm going to do is drag it and connect it underneath the go to xy block and then still in the control toolbox I'm going to get an if then there's an if then else block as well which kind of looks like an e but I don't want that one I want the one that looks like a little squished c if then and I'm going to put that inside the forever it's important it goes inside the forever not above 
not around or anywhere else inside. Sometimes you put your code in the wrong place, like just there, I put it into the wrong place on purpose. But if that happens to you, it's kind of like Lego. You can just break it apart like this and then put it back in the order that you want it. So I want the if then to go inside the forever like that, because we're gonna forever keep on checking if it's touching the maze. So to get the touching block, we're gonna go into the sensing toolbox. And the very first one up the top is called touching mouse pointer. And you'll, again, you'll see the little white arrow, which lets you know that you can change that. So I'm gonna drag that uh, this in and you'll see the shape of it. It kind of fits the shape uh, in between the if and the then. And when I put it over it, you'll see it kind of gets a little halo. That means it's ready to be dropped in. So when I drop it in, the if then expands and just to cater uh, to fit in the, the touching block. And finally, I wanna change this from mouse pointer to be maze. So if touching maze, then into the motion toolbox and get a move 10 steps. And we're gonna put that inside the if then. And what we're gonna do is change it to be minus 10. Okay, so that should work now. Let me test my code. Let me get rid of my head. Okay, so I'm gonna click on the green flag. And when I bump off a wall of the maze, you'll see that it, it detects and it runs this code and runs the minus 10 steps. Okay, so that's working for me. Okay, so if you want to go ahead and do step number five, which is to stop the beetle going through the walls, um, the you're going to be adding it to the beetle sprite and you're going to be putting it underneath the go to XY block. So you're going to put it into the control toolbox and get a forever block and put that underneath go to XY. Then you're going to still in the control toolbox, you're going to get an if then block and that goes inside the forever block. And then you're going to go into the sensing toolbox. And then the very first block in there is called, it says touching mouse pointer. We're going to drag that in and put it inside the, the little gap between if and then. Um, it should get a little halo around it and you can drop it in. And then you click on the little white arrow beside mouse pointer and you select maze. So that block should now say touching maze. And then finally, if you go into the motion toolbox, you can get a move 10 steps and that goes inside the if then block and you change 10 to be minus 10 because you want you want your character, your beetle to go back instead of forward. So minus 10 steps. OK, so I'll give people a couple of minutes to do that step. And once we've done that step, then we can talk about how we can improve the game. So we'll talk about, you know, what we could add in to the maze game to uh, make it better. A couple of ideas. But I'll give another couple of minutes just for people to finish this step number five. Time, I'll get the list of coders. To do the draw for the micro bit that we'll be giving away. So we have 
a 145 coder. So we'll run that code, uh, that code that we ran here. We'll do it again. Let me change that to three. Um, to pick the winner of the micro bit, but we'll do that at the end. Okay, so I'll just give maybe another 30 seconds for people to finish off step number four before we move on to, uh, or sorry, step number five. And step number five is the final step in the project. So we're, it's a simple enough project that we started out with today. Um, and as I said at the start, we're going to move on to um, some more and more complicated ones. Uh, I might give you a little preview actually once we talk about step, once we finish off step number six here, talking about improving the game. I'll look at the code alongs that are upcoming because um, we're going to be doing some other things, not just scratch. Um, and I'd like to go through those. Okay. So I'm going to presume that most students now have finished step number five, which is the final step in the game or in the project. So now we're going to talk about improving the game and what we might be able to do. So when you do a project, um, you know, one of our projects or any other projects that are out there, it's always good to have a think about how you would like to improve it. You know, I always find when I'm making a game or an animation or a project, I come up with my own ideas that I want to add into the game or whatever the project is. And I always think that that's a good idea to do because it, it uh, makes you explore the different blocks that are there in Scratch or Microbits or MakeCode, you know, all the different uh, coding languages that you might be making projects in. So it makes you explore and see what's there, what tools you have, what code you can use to, to do different things. And um, so just some examples of what you could do in this game, uh, this maze game, is you could do a finish area. Um, so what you, you could do is add in, maybe draw in a certain color here at the finish. And you could detect when your sprite touches, touches that color and then you know that you've completed the maze. You could then maybe do another uh, idea which would be to um, you could add different levels oh let me get rid of that so you could add different levels so you could add in different sprites uh, maze sprites so you can just download them you know from the internet download a maze and upload it into your project and you can use the hide and the show um, blocks to you know uh, just show the maze the, for level one and then when you complete the maze for level one, hide level one and show level two, that would be another idea. Another idea would be no mistakes, which means if you actually touch, oh, let me zoom in or move up. If you, if your character touches off any of the walls, you make it go back to the start. I can quickly show you what that would look like. So I can just actually duplicate this out here. So instead of moving, it's when you touch the maze, instead of moving 10 steps, I'll just put that here. I could say, go to X minus 155, Y minus 75, which is the start of the maze. So I'll show you what that looks like. So if I'm moving along and I'm doing great, but I touch off the wall here, it jumps me back to the start. So it's just a different idea. And all of this is just changing a little bit of code in your project to to make it work that way so there's loads of different things that you can do and I, i'd encourage you to come up with your own ideas we're actually going to give away another micro bit so we're going to give, give away one now we're going to pick out uh, one person one of the student coders from today we're, uh, and we're going to do a kind of raffle and give this one out but we're going to give another one out to any we're, what we're going to encourage you to do is to um, submit your projects into what we call the Codiverse. This is just our kind of, um, it's like a kind of social media feed of all our coders as they're working through all the different projects. So you can follow each other, you can like different projects and things like that, you can react, um, but you can also submit your project in into the Codiverse. So if you click on Codiverse and share a project, you can actually share a Scratch project. So if you want to keep on working on your Scratch project and if you have, if you're signed in, you're able to save it and share it. And 
you just get the URL, which is the link of it, and you put it in here and share my project. So what we're encouraging all the coders today to do is to um, work on their maze project, add in something different into it, one of your own ideas, share it into our Codiverse, and we'll pick the best one, and next week we'll announce who we give the second micro bit to. Okay, so we're nearly finished. So before we move on, let me just quickly talk about what are the upcoming live code alongs. So next week we're going to be doing a penalty shootout um, code along. So this is a, another scratch game where it's like a penalty shootout and you choose where to shoot the ball and the keeper tries to save it. We're going to be doing an animation, one called Attack of the Dots, which is a, a really cool one an autonomous car and um, so we're going to actually program a car like a tesla to use ai to work its way itself around the track so you won't be controlling the car your computer your code will be controlling the car we'll be doing some patterns and then we're going to move on to arcade arcade is another programming language where you, it's specifically designed for creating games so we're going to create a platformer game a space shooter and some other things as well so we'll be moving on to those okay so let's, oh, let me get that back up here. So let's pick out one more coder to give away the microbit. So we've got 145 coders. So I'm gonna run this code again. So again, what this code is doing is when I click on the green flag, it's gonna wait three seconds and then it's gonna say, uh, it's gonna to join together these words. The winner is number, and then it's gonna pick a random number between one and 145 and hopefully it won't be number 88 again uh, because I think one prize is enough. Okay, so let's see who wins the microbit. So the winner is number 91. Oh, very close to 88. Okay, let's have a look at 91. So max OC, let me do red for max OC. So you win the microbit and Matt won the VR. So we'll get in touch with your teachers and to organize to post those out to you, so well done. Um, so that's it for today for the Code Along. Thanks everyone for joining. Um, unfortunately, our feed didn't work. I'm not sure, I think it's because we had over 300 students joined in. So we'll just need to uh, fix that so it's working for the next time because the feed is really fun because you can see uh, people pro uh, as they progress and as they finish all the different um, all the different steps, it all updates and we can put up different kind of quizzes and things into it. So we'll try and get that working for the next time. So we're back again next Wednesday at 11. Uh, teachers, if you have any questions about today, um, just send an email to myself, alan at codingireland.ie, and we'll be happy to get back to you. Okay, see you next Wednesday. Bye.